Cool. We're here with Dick Bechet from Bechet Vineyards. How you doing? One of the most uh, renowned vineyards in Washington State. Highly sought after fruit. Uh, Dick, for those that don't know about you and what you do at your vineyard site, can you give us a little brief reca recap of what you guys are all about? Well, I'm uh, in the lower Yakima Valley, uh, north of Grandview, at the, foot hill, at the foot of the Rattlesnake Hills. And I've been... Uh, I started planting grapes, wine grapes, in the valley about 30 years ago. Okay, I will. And I planted Merlot and Cab, and I think there were nine wineries at the time. Yeah. Now, I don't know how many. It's somewhere approaching 600 and 700. Um, I sell to about 25 wineries, small, all over the state. Uh, I'm, I grow, gosh, maybe 15 different varieties. I think predominantly I have Syrah, Merlot, Cab. Cap Franc. Uh, How many acres are you guys? I have uh, 120 acres okay. of wine grapes. I'm also a cherry grower, an apple grower, wow. and uh, juice grapes. And I have, and that's in addition to the wine grapes. Something new I've been doing, new and exciting, is uh, managing vineyards. Okay. And I'm managing some vineyards in Red Mountain for uh, FSD Vineyards, for Chris Upchurch, it's a group called McCoy, and then uh, Cool Solar Vineyard for St. Michelle. So I've got job security. You're a busy guy. Yeah. So you know, uh, just about every winemaker you talk to will say that the, the great wine starts in the vineyard. What are some of the things that you guys do at Boucher Vineyards to ensure that your grapes are just the best quality you can possibly get? Well, first you got to get a good winemaker to partner up. It makes yeah. life easier, but uh, I, I think uh, it's taken me a, a while to figure it out. The first 10 years farming grapes, I didn't have a clue, and now I'm, I'm comfortable with my sights. And it's really about being frugal, don't overwater, don't over fertilize. I don't like the word stress, I don't like the word uh, deficit irrigation, it's moderation. And I shoot for uh, small cluster, small berries, lots of hand thinning, and then teaming up with a good winemaker. And then and that's important because you get feedback from your grapes. Right. And, uh, I like working with smaller because they need me as much as I need them. And I like working with winemakers that are comfortable in the vineyard so we can talk about what kind of grapes they want. Have you, have you guys ever tried dry farming? Um, in, in my sort of... Uh, where I've moved higher up on hills, these leaner soils, mm -hmm. I, I can't dry farm because there's just not enough depth. I'm on these rocky ledges. But on my first adventure that I planted uh, back in 1980 on Merlot, it was in deep soil, just 20 feet of sandy loom, uh, Missoula flood dirt. And I I stopped irrigating after the 10th year, and I had this block for 25 years, and I didn't water it for 15 years. Wow. But if there's some moisture. The roots are down about 16 feet, and uh, they're, uh, they find water. And, uh, good. Un uh, momento. Yeah. Uh, and. Uh, I probably in our area it, it's not recommended. It worked in my little site, and I would and I would think long term of all of oh, that's something that's probably they have a little more moisture. But we get six to seven inches of rain. It's just we kind of run out of things. Right. So we are in a desert. So, uh, but I since I pulled that Merlot block out. <laughs> yeah. And uh, but it was it was really the easiest block I ever had to farm because it was self-sustaining. And the fruit was wonderful. I used to sell it to Bob Betts, Kay Simon, at Chinook Winery, and Delilah would go in their D2. Yeah. And, uh, I, so. Well, outside of your own vineyards, what are a couple of your favorite vineyard spots on the site? Gosh. Well, I've always liked Cold Creek at St. Michelle. Yeah. I mean, it's just this wonderful established block, a lot of heat, big structured lines, uh, shampoo, I love. Uh, I'm really... They're not as well known yet, but uh, oh, okay. Snipes okay. Mountain stuff that yep. uh, they're coming out of Upland. They're just some beautiful 
uh, the gravel that they have up there. Uh, De Bruyne, uh, Mike Sowers has been one of my, you know, and it's hard for me to just separate the grower from the, there's a lot of growers I interact with and uh, I'm emotionally, we've known each other, felt like we've grown up and figured this farming thing out together, so I'm really partial to that type of group. Sagemore I've always liked, certain blocks, uh, Weinbau. Um, do I have to be politically correct and no. say other places to No, you don't. <laughs> We don't we don't roll that way here. We don't roll. No, those are there's a lot of good vineyards. Yeah. Start. It's just uh, really hooking up. There's a lot of good growers. A lot of them get lost in the shuffle. They sell the same shell or hogue right. or, or Columbia, and they're not recognized. But the fruit's very good. Oh yeah. So well, cool. Hey. I appreciate your time. No, my thank pleasure. You for, thank you for everything. Yeah, hopefully.